Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we sit down with a team of industry experts to learn more about genetic evaluation, DNA testing, and how it can mean more money for your operation. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're sitting down with the experts to talk about DNA testing and what it can mean for your operation. And joining me in the studio, Dr. Kent Anderson, the Associate Director of Technical Services for Pfizer Animal Genetics, Dr. Tom Field, Executive Director of Producer Education for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, and Gerald Callahan, President of Express Ranches and also Vice President of the American Angus Association Board of Directors. Gentlemen, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. You know, we want to start by talking a little bit about genetic evaluation in general. And Ken, I guess I'd pose the first question to you. Of all the things we manage in beef cattle production, what's the importance of genetic evaluation? Well, Kevin, uh, genetics really sets the stage for the rest of the production chain. Most of our traits are 0.2 to 0.4 heritable or higher. And so we can um, set that uh, stage for production right up front. Uh, for example, if um, you're interested in calving these bulls um, and you want to make sure you have a good uh, calving experience, uh, genetics can set that stage right up front. Um, or for another example, if you're interested in feedlot growth and efficiency, uh, by virtue of capitalizing upon our genetic information, uh, you can help to roll back those costs of gains and increase your productivity and profitability. And, and Tom, what would you tell us, uh, based on your perspective, of the role of genetic evaluation in modern beef production? Well, think about our industry today. We have opportunities to pursue unique market niches with very unique standards on carcass and potentially feed yard performance. Uh, meanwhile, back at home at a cow-calf operation, it's the age-old question, how do I get the environment and the genetics I've got to work together to produce a productive herd? Uh, and if I'm going to do that without genetic evaluation, it's like trying to, to literally land a plane on an aircraft carrier with no navigation system at night. You're going to be lucky if you ever hit the target, and if you happen to land, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what genetic evaluation gives us is a really much more assurance that the choices we're making are actually going to move our population in the direction we want, and it also provides us a way to stay out of the, out of the bar ditches so I don't go too far left with the trait, say too little birth weight, or I don't go too far to the right with too much birth weight. Uh, same thing on all the other traits really that we work with. Gerald, there's been a lot of changes in genetic evaluation, even in the last 30 or 40 years. I'd be interested in your perspective relative to the evolution of genetic evaluation. And then more importantly, what does it mean to breeders like yourselves and commercial cattlemen and, and frankly, the beef industry in general? Yeah, it, it really has been quite an evolution. Uh, we've been trying to measure performance for many, many years, and we did it oftentimes in the early days with gain tests like at bull test stations. And then along in the 80s, we, we started with breeding values, and, and they, uh, they worked very well. And they were the first step in the process that formed expected progeny differences, or EPDs, which most commercial cattlemen and purebred breeders work with on a daily basis. Now we have the added piece of the genomically enhanced EPDs. And I think what it does, not only for our operation, it, it allows us to have a greater confidence in the data that we utilize. At the Angus Association, we really have the largest database of, of any purebred association in history. And with that realm of data, it gives us the confidence that, as Tom, like Tom said, when we're selecting for a low birth weight bull, that the database is there on the SAR and the dam and his individual performance. And so consequently, not only us, but our end user, the commercial man, can make an informed, intelligent decision and hopefully, as was stated earlier, have a good calving experience. Dr. Anderson, I'd be interested, what role specifically does DNA testing play in this whole game of genetic evaluation? Historically, DNA testing was used to authenticate parentage. And of course, that had a couple of different functions. First and foremost, to make sure that the ancestry was correct. But secondarily, that set the stage for really good EPDs. Uh, next, uh, DNA testing was really valuable to help us manage genetic abnormalities. But now the really exciting part is with our high-density testing platforms, 
we can make genomic-based predictions for all the performance traits that really impact productivity. And so that's what's really exciting now. Yeah, that's very exciting. Tom, what would you add? Well, as a commercial producer, I care a lot about longevity, docility, a lot of the, the traits that we really don't measure until fairly late in life, carcass performance will be the same. Now I've got the opportunity to understand very early in that calf's life what the opportunity is for that calf to fit into my mating system and then on our own cattle potentially to determine which marketing channel we're going to send cattle towards. Well, the use of DNA technology is important for all segments of the beef industry. Cattleman the Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more. The pace of change in the beef cattle industry has made a leap forward with the growing use of DNA technology to learn the precise genetic fingerprint that determines how each animal will perform. Back not that long ago in 1989, there was one marker for marbling. And from there, it's grown exponentially in recent times. Uh, we started 2009 in Pfizer Animal Genetics with a 56 marker panel that does a great job for three traits. And one year later, we started 2010 with a 50,000 marker panel that covers 13 traits and has the flexibility for expansion to almost an unlimited number of characteristics. And so it has come of age and it's exciting times. I think we're certainly moving in a direction where competitiveness and narrower margins are potentially going to force us to identify ways to make more informed decisions. And certainly there's a number of different ways to do that, but I think genomics is going to be a very important way to make those more informed decisions. Whether it's a seed stock operation, a commercial producer, or a feed yard, Kent Anderson says the range of DNA products from Pfizer Animal Genetics puts genetic information in the hands of producers so they can make more accurate decisions. There's two ways we make improvement in our beef cattle populations. It's through either selection, finding those outlier animals that do lots of things well, and then propagating them more uh, rapidly. And then also mating, making sure that we are able to match um, sires to groups of females that accentuate their strengths and um, help their weaknesses. And so the, the nifty thing about this technology is, is that it allows us to um, increase the accuracy and to improve the scope of selection across more traits. And uh, by doing so, we're able to identify early in life those animals that, um, that are genetically superior across the traits of economic importance, uh, such that we can uh, more rapidly propagate them and such that we can uh, more wisely mate them to the uh, opposite mate that uh, accentuates things as, as much as possible. The traits that are important will be unique to the segment of production that we're working in. So the traits that are important to a cow-calf producer may include things like weaning weight, the propensity to rebreed quickly, um, birth weights, for example, feed efficiency, some of those traditional traits that are important in profitability of the cow-calf person. Whereas for other segments of the industry, things like tenderness and marbling and, and yield uh, become much more important. Anderson believes the addition of DNA sampling to a seed stock and commercial cattle operation can build on existing tools, such as EPDs, and help producers make better breeding and selection decisions early in each animal's life. It increases the accuracy and the scope of selection, so we can save all the time and all the money associated with selection decisions that, um, using traditional technology, may or may not have taken us in the right direction. So bottom line for me, why should producers use the technology is that it can um, help us make more dependable decisions for genetic improvement and that avoids lost time and opportunity in the form of mistakes that might be made using only traditional um, ways of evaluating animals. And the vision of Pfizer Animal Genetics is that a marriage between that time-tested uh, and, and dependable uh, use of pedigree and performance data with the new um, opportunities created by genomics is the most optimum. Uh, the idea is that by using all available information, the traditional pedigree and performance, along with the new genomic information, 
were then able to integrate that into one single prediction of genetic merit across each of the traits that has maximum reliability so that producers can make uh, decisions uh, and uh, do so with more confidence. Delivering superior genetics is the goal of the Pfizer animal genetics team. It's a goal that benefits all segments of the beef industry. Tom, no doubt this is technology that's been around for a few years, but I'll be honest with you, a number of folks that I've talked with have taken a real wait and see attitude. Uh, why do you think it's important to take action now? You know, I, I would be, have been counted amongst the skeptics uh, even five, ten years ago. Uh, but as I've watched this technology evolve and, and seen the rapid speed uh, ability to actually take this full mapped genome mm -hmm. and begin to mine out the information, we've, we've got an opportunity of a lifetime. And the great thing about this technology, this is not a size of operation limiting technology. This works whether you're a large operation and actually for small producers. If you're a small seed stock producer, this gives you a chance to leapfrog in the information realm. And the reality is in this market today, no information, no market. We'll follow up on that in a little bit. Did you know that you can find Pfizer Animal Health on Facebook and Twitter? Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash P-A-H-U-S forward slash livestock. Follow us on Twitter at Pfizer underscore beef. Thanks, gentlemen. We have a great discussion going here, and we'll be right back with a look at genomic enhanced EPDs. Stay with us. Draxon, clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. Man, with Drax, and we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Quality matters to me because our local farmers and ranchers entrust us with the marketing of their livestock each and every week. It's their livelihood and how they provide for their families. Also, friends and families in the community eat at our cafe and watch the auction to be connected with the beef industry. I take great pride in knowing that my livestock auction keeps this community strong and provides our consumers with a great image of the beef they eat. I'm very proud of what we will do here today. Join America's cattle industry for the 2011 Summer Conference in Orlando, Florida. It's a great opportunity to meet your fellow cattlemen and women, plus spend time planning for the future of your operation and our great industry. Bring the whole family and join us in Orlando, Florida for the 2011 Cattle Industry Summer Conference, August 1st through 4th. For details, call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. We'll see you there. Welcome back. We're talking about the importance of genetic testing and DNA technology and what it can mean for your operation. Let's get back to our discussion. Can't we want to focus today on the high density 50K product from Pfizer Animal Genetics? And I'd like you to begin just by telling us a little bit about what it is and how is it different from some of the other available tests on the market? Kevin, the simple answer is that it has a lot more markers, 50,000. So the high density, or HD, 50K, 50,000 markers, means that we have markers across the whole breadth of the animal's genetic makeup. We then, at Pfizer Animal Genetics, working with Angus Genetics, Inc., have um, associated the effects of those markers on our performance and production traits, uh, such that we can get uh, predictions of genetic merit earlier in an animal's life. And we're pleased that as of last fall, Angus Genetics, Inc. is the distributor of this technology, and it's feeding into their performance program. 
So, so why did you choose to form that partnership with the American Angus Association? Kevin, I think it's the marriage of um, arguably one of the world's most powerful traditional genetic evaluations of pedigree and performance information with uh, the most powerful DNA testing platform in the high density 50K. Beyond that, I think the collaboration mainly boils down to simplifying selection for seed stock and commercial customers. So rather than have separate genetic predictions based on traditional versus genomic technology, now they're all blended into one most dependable number. And that really simplifies it for breeders and commercial producers. And Gerald, you're heavily involved in the American Angus Association, first of all as a breeder, but also uh, on the board, vice president of the board. Uh, what benefits do you believe this partnership have brought to the American Association members? Well, I think quite a few. As Kent said, uh, at AGI, the American, uh, at the American Angus Association, we have a subsidiary called AGI, Angus Genetics Incorporated. And what we're hoping will happen is this is a conduit by way that we bring the technology from Pfizer's through AGI to our producer. And, and so what we're doing is we're keeping it in a form that he's already used to with regard to EPDs. Then the genomics enhance the EPDs so we don't have to totally go through the whole education process again. And so I think uh, we feel like that we're going to be the conduit or delivery system that will deliver the technology from the scientist to the producer. And Dr. Anderson, uh, what does the availability of these uh, genomically enhanced EPDs powered by your 50K product mean specifically to Angus breeders and, and the buyers of those genetic inputs? Well, I think several things, Kevin. As, as Gerald alluded to, the high-density 50K predictions blended into the EPDs help make the EPDs more dependable. They also boost the accuracy of the predictions for animals. And uh, through our efforts to evaluate the efficacy of the technology, um, we've found that the high density 50K represents the equivalent of anywhere from seven or eight to up to 20 different progeny records uh, that would be feeding into the genetic predictions for animals. So, in terms of progeny equivalence, that's more than a lifetime of natural calf production for cows, and it's um, a pretty nice chunk of calves for a sire. So that just helps to jumpstart the dependability of the EPD for the breeder and for the commercial producer. Gerald, you sell a lot of bulls to commercial cow-calf operators, and I guess I'd be interested to know what is the value to those commercial cow-calf operators, and, and also, what value does this technology bring to feed yards who are trying to hit one of those specific targets that Tom was talking about, like certified Angus beef? Yeah, I think quite a bit. As Ken alluded to, uh, the big deal is increased confidence. Uh, when you take this technology and you utilize it, and you're a customer sitting at one of our bull sales, and you have the reliability that this data that you're furnished with would be like a bull servicing one calf crop. And so when you look at his marbling EPD that's genomically enhanced or his ribeye air EPD that's genomically enhanced, then you have the confidence that you can fit some of these target markets, for example, like certified Angus beef. And as producer, with these high input costs, we certainly need to try to get to those premium markets. Information is power, no doubt. Did you know that you can find Pfizer Animal Health on Facebook and Twitter? Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash P-A-H-U-S forward slash livestock. And follow us on Twitter at Pfizer underscore beef. We'll continue with more advice from the experts on genetics in your herd. Plus, we'll learn more about how Express Ranches is putting the technology to work in their operation. Stay with us. These days, more cattlemen choose Draxon to fight BRD than any other brand. Here's why. It works, but we have uh, fewer uh, repulls, and the ones that we do repull respond, and we have fewer chronics in the end. To retreat anything is, it's a lot more expensive than using Draxon as the first time. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts retreats by 50%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see why Draxon should be your first choice to fight BRD. Basically what it's allowed us to do with our operation is run more cattle through in a given period of time. It's just really been a good, good product to use. 
Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Purina's wind and rain minerals are research tested and field proven to provide balanced mineral nutrition essential for cattle health, growth, and reproduction. They're highly palatable so cattle consume what they need when they need it. And wind and rain mineral special formulation resists the elements so they won't blow out of the feeder and maintain their palatability even if they've been wet. Wind and rain cattle minerals from Purina Mills, building better cattle. Quality matters to me because I put the finishing touches on the cattle I feed. I search for the highest quality forages and provide a comfortable environment that allow the animals to thrive and grow. I'm the last person that has an impact on the quality and consistency of the product that goes to the consumer. And that matters to me and the crew that I manage. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. Welcome back. We're continuing our discussion about how you can use DNA technology in your own operation. We're joined by a panel of experts, one of which is Gerald Callahan, president of Express Ranches. Thanks for coming today, Gerald. And I wanted to begin by just asking a couple of questions about Express Ranches itself. Give me a sense of the overall breeding objectives uh, that you have uh, at Express Ranches. Well, what we're trying to do is, is produce a superior product that makes a profit for our customers and creates the least problems possible. Uh, that's our objective, not only for customers, but within our own operation. And give us some insight into the decision-making process you went through to, first of all, determine whether or not you were going to use DNA technology, and then secondly, the decision to uh, use the HD50K product from Pfizer Animal Genetics. Well, we're always looking uh, for as much information as we can get to make the best decisions we can get. So what we've been doing is we've been, we've been analyzing our young animals, and we've been supplying that information to our bull customers. And what we hope to do is, is to identify the truly superior animals at a very young age so we can maximize their genetic potential within our herd. And we're also looking to eliminate those animals that could cause problems for us or our customers and don't really work out in the beef industry and need to be eliminated. I think is, uh, the, the beauty of this is, for us and our customers, is that with this DNA technology, uh, when we use a genomically enhanced EPD, it gives us the same information as if that bull would have had seven to twenty offspring or if that female would have had seven to twenty calves. And so we're really excited about it and its impact and we're using it on all of the progeny born in 2011 at Express Ranches. And specifically, what are you telling your commercial customers about how they should begin incorporating this information into their decision-making process? Well, I think the beauty of this is, is the marriage between the American Angus Association and Pfizer's. Really, those that are comfortable using EPDs, which most commercial men are now, they don't really have to change anything. But what they can do is buy with a greater confidence mm -hmm. that uh, there's just more information, there's more to back it up. Now, not only do you have the pedigree and the prediction and the production prediction, but you also have the genomic piece, and so they have more confidence when they buy. And so when they look at the EPDs, it just gives them greater accuracy and greater confidence. Tom, I want to put you on the spot. You, you play a little double duty, both in terms of your producer education role, but frankly your role as a cow-calf producer itself. And I guess I'd be interested to know what kind of application do you see it having in a commercial cow-calf operation like yourselves? Well, for us, the, our, our number one goal is mistake-free. Um, no surprises is really how we try to manage the whole operation, and certainly that fits into our genetic selection. For most of us in the commercial cow-calf business, we're, we're going out to bull sales today and we're, we're going to put down between $3,000 to $6,000 a bull. And for me, I'm happy to spend that money so long as I've got confidence that what I'm buying is going to deliver what's promised. And, and what this does is add another layer of information and confidence in us. And, and this is important because I'm in a family business. If I make a mistake selecting bulls, uh, I get the phone calls uh, for being the bad guy, so I like the fact that it gives me a better chance to win with my brothers and our manager. It looks like Gerald is just going to make a sales call on you after that <laughs> comment. Did you know that you can find Pfizer Animal Health on Facebook and Twitter? Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash P-A-H-U-S forward slash livestock. 
and follow us on Twitter at Pfizer underscore beef. Again, excellent information, gentlemen, and we'll take a look at some of the results DNA testing could bring to your operation next. Draxon, clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. And with Draxon, we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic, very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer, you just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Quality hay starts with quality equipment. That's why it pays to go with the long green line. Get the hay tools you need to tackle everything from the first cutting through the last bale of the season. Choose John Deere and get quality that lasts, reliability that stands the test of time, and resale value you can take to the bank. All backed by the finest dealer network in the land, John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Get zero for 48 or big cash discounts on select John Deere hay equipment through August 1st. There's never been a better time to trade. See your local John Deere dealer soon. Education, networking, opportunity, and fun. That's what you'll find at the 2012 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. Get your ticket to ride with your fellow cattlemen and women in the country music capital of the world. You'll find cutting-edge education, top-of-the-line technology, and entertainment that can't be beat. Don't miss your ticket to ride to the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee, February 1st through the 4th, 2012. For more information, visit BeefUSA.org. Welcome back. Well, let's get back to the discussion. Ken, I want to turn to you. We've learned a little bit about what the technology is, but I want to take us to higher plane and say, what role can this technology play in maintaining our global competitiveness or even improving our global competitiveness in the uh, global protein industry? So you want to step back and take a big picture. Yeah. Well, it's been estimated that by the middle of this century, we're going to have to double food production to meet the pace of population growth. And so that means we're going to have to get a lot more efficient. Uh, matter of fact, they've estimated that when we double that food production, 70% of that doubling is going to have to come from efficiency improving technologies because after all our land base for food production is shrinking. So it might be interesting just to visit a little about what's happened in the corn business mm -hmm. as it relates to genetics. Uh, thanks to trait stacks that are now being integrated into hybrid seeds, we're estimating that by the middle of the century we could push corn yields to an average of nearly 300 bushels per acre, which is, is good news for cattle producers because we know corn's likely going to be used for energy production. Mm -hmm. It also means that we're probably going to have sustained periods of high feed costs. Mm -hmm. And so technologies such as HD50K feed in nicely to enable us as beef producers to remain competitive across the landscape of agriculture. And it helps to give us tools for traits that are difficult, time consuming, and expensive to measure, such as dry matter intake and that complex of traits that relate to feed efficiency. So if we can um, select animals and make rapid genetic improvement in efficient conversion of feed, I think it helps position us to be competitive against the other protein sources as well as um, serve a higher calling to help feed the world. Yeah. 
That's, that's great perspective. Tom, we have a lot of viewers uh, that watch this show, everybody from folks that have 5, 8, 12, 15 cows to folks that, that run thousands of cows or, or operate large feed yards, big stocker operators. Is this technology more appropriate for some sizes and types of, of cattle producers than others? Well, I think the technology is actually applicable across the industry. And as, as you look at the total seed stock spectrum, I think commercial producers ought to be on the phone to their seed stock suppliers saying, uh, you are involved, right? <laughs> um, but more importantly, I think there's a group that should be very excited, and that's, that's the smaller seed stock producer who has always struggled. You know, how do I get enough calves to create a, a meaningful contemporary group so that I can measure things beyond weaning weight? Uh, how do I get enough numbers so that I can have a meaningful ultrasound test? Well, what this technology does is it, it gives that smaller producer a chance to leapfrog past all that because a, a genomically enhanced EPD, we, as we've talked, seven to 20 additional progeny in that, all of a sudden you're on the same playing field with the big boys. Uh, and, and I think this really levels the playing field and it gives uh, producers of all sizes an opportunity to be more competitive to provide better information and service to their customers. Gerald, I guess I put you on the spot. You know, uh, help me wrestle through the economics. There's a lot of options of where a person can spend their money from, Tom mentioned, ultrasounding and feeds and supplements and clearly genetics. Make the economic case that this kind of testing makes sense for me. Well, I, I can just speak to how we're using it at the ranch, and I think um, what we've decided to do there, uh, we're keeping our heifers, our heifer replacements on a lower plane of nutrition. We're using the genomics uh, to identify the superior ones. And uh, so we're not supplementing them as hard as we used to because we used to always be concerned about how much IMF they would have, how well they would ultrasound. And we wanted to feed them hard enough that we could have those cattle that had those genetics uh, uh, actually uh, pop up as being superior in the population. Uh, with genomics, we don't feel like we have to do that now. So we're having a big cost savings in terms of input cost with regard to that. I think on the flip side, we're doing calves uh, at weaning or prior to weaning uh, with regard to the genomics and I think it will help us identify and eliminate uh, the problem ones, the ones that don't look very good with regard to the data and I think when we eliminate them at a younger age uh, it's going to save us money as well. They still may be a loser in our operation but they will not be as big a loser. Consequently, it's going to be a cost savings to us overall. Okay, that's an interesting way to look at it. Kent, I've, I've seen in some of your literature and some of the presentations, you've been using the words versatile and extendable as you describe this HD50K product. Can you explain to me just a little bit more about what that means? Sure, uh, Kevin, I think it all goes back to the word coverage. With 50,000 markers across the whole breadth of the cattle genetic makeup, you know, we're picking up signal uh, from lots of markers associated with genes that affect different traits. And, and for example, just since the first of the year, since we entered into the collaboration with Angus Genetics Inc., we've seen that versatility come forth in several forms. Uh, first, uh, thanks to the folks at AGI, we've got genomic enhanced EPDs now for all the production traits. That's mm -hmm. all happened since the first of the year. In the weeks ahead, we anticipate genomic enhanced EPDs for calving ease. Mm -hmm. We also enabled the parentage component. So we're taking the parentage markers off of the 50K platform and authenticating sire and dam. And that has um, more effect than just having an act actual uh, and accurate pedigree in that it also helps us um, have that extra added assurance that animals are free of genetic abnormalities by virtue of having that authenticated pedigree. And it also helps to contribute to the most accurate EPDs possible because we're linking them back to the appropriate parents. And then um, another aspect that we're excited about is um, in the months ahead, we have genomic predictions scheduled uh, to cover off on most of the rest of the EPD traits. So I, I hope that kind of shows how rapidly uh, we can use this very large, comprehensive uh, panel of markers to evolve with the times, to get better and better predictions for existing traits as we go forward, as well as to add predictions for additional traits that sometimes are really hard to measure but yet have a big impact on either profit or productivity. It really is some exciting progress. DNA testing and genetic evaluation can return dividends to your operation. And collecting DNA samples to get started is as easy addition as any processing routine. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more. 
The growing availability and wider use of DNA technology on seed stock, cow-calf, and feedlot operations across the country is giving leading producers an edge in making more informed breeding and herd management decisions faster. So how difficult is it to get started? Getting started is easy. Pfizer Animal Genetics is happy to provide on a complementary basis um, hair sample collectors or FTA blood cards. Uh, we can also have producers submit samples in the form of semen samples. Um, any of those will provide DNA necessary uh, for our tests. What happens is that um, yeah, the producer that wants to get started can call one of our sales representatives and we're happy to get the sample collectors into their hands uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, once the samples then um, are taken, uh, we advise the producer to uh, be diligent about filling out the forms and making sure that the animal identification matches uh, nicely uh, with the paperwork and uh, the sample collector. So upon arrival at Pfizer Animal Genetics, the DNA will be extracted and then the genotypes for the markers, depending on the panel, will be determined. And those genotypes then will go into our computer and prediction equations will be applied to those genotypes such that we can then equate them to the genomic breeding value or molecular value prediction that are associated with various traits for that particular animal. I think the important thing is to understand it is a, a complex process and, and probably when we look at pictures of the lab and, and discuss things about the lab, it may be a bit understated because there's so much automation and, and technology behind it that it actually looks a little simpler than it is. Um, fortunately though for us, we have an excellent team of individuals that work throughout the process from the DNA extraction all the way to the development of the customer report. Um, and those individuals really put a lot of effort into everything there uh, and really make sure that we're able to deliver quality predictions every time. While taking DNA samples on the ranch is not difficult, as with any operation, there are a few key factors to keep in mind. The more that it can be part of our normal animal processing at various times of the year, the better. You know, for example, uh, most producers will do breeding soundness exams on their bull battery in the spring of the year prior to turnout for spring calving cow herds. And that's a great time to get DNA samples on your bull battery for testing. At the same time, um, when calves go through preconditioning, um, either before or shortly after weaning, that's a great time to go ahead and get DNA samples. And um, on the cow side of the equation, um, either at pregnancy check time or when they come through for their uh, normal animal health regime, uh, those all represent opportune times to gather DNA. So if you're using FTA blood cards and you're pricking the ear and getting a drop of blood on the card, it's important to use a different needle um, every time uh, for every animal uh, so that you don't have DNA from one animal get contaminated with DNA on a subsequent animal. It's also important to let those cards uh, become thoroughly dry uh, before packaging them and sending them. And more detail on sample collection is available from Pfizer Animal Genetics to take a producer step by step through the process. We have all the directions necessary to get samples collected on your animals. It's easy to fill out the paperwork and it's um, uh, then uh, quite um, easy to receive the reports and the results and get a hold of either one of us in technical services or one of our sales representatives and we're happy to go over those results for you. Usually in less than 30 days, a producer can have in hand the DNA data that will allow them to make decisions based on what they know about an animal, not just what they see. Now Kent, is the process for Angus breeders who are collecting and submitting samples to AGI any different from what we've just seen? Kevin, let's just walk through what an Angus breeder would do step by step to test animals. Mm -hmm. First step would be to contact Angus Genetics Inc, AGI, and uh, request um, FTA card collectors. Those are blood spot card collectors. Second step would be to get onto the American Angus Association's website into the secured member section. There's a very efficient, easy way then where animals can, or where members can pull up their animal inventory and flag animals that they will be submitting samples on for testing. Then the samples are submitted to AGI, where they double check to make sure that those animals are on file, 
and then they batch those samples and send them to Pfizer Animal Genetics where we run the high density 50K genotypes and produce the genomic predictions. We then send those genomic predictions back to AGI and they report the results to customers in the form of genomic enhanced EPDs and percent ranks. Well, tell us more about those reports and the results that we get back as a result of this DNA testing. Yeah, first I would just offer that um, on the public version of the American Angus Association website, it uh, shows whether or not animals are tested by virtue of nomenclature that says PF50 at the upper left-hand corner of the query screen if you use the animal EPD lookup, as well as if you um, click and highlight on animals that are pulled up from the search engines. And so if that designation is there, you know that the EPDs are powered by HD50K. But in addition to that, Kevin, uh, the customer will also get back percent ranks that are associated exclusively with the genomic predictions from 50K with lower numbers indicating higher or more favorable percent ranks. So an animal that, say, has a 10% rank for a trait like dry matter intake would rank in the most favorable 10% of the population for low dry matter intake. And those percent ranks then, um, as suggested there, go beyond just the EPD traits but include dry matter intake, residual feed intake, and tenderness, which are traits that are only reported through genomic means um, and not EPDs. The dry matter intake does um, impact the EPDs for residual average daily gain behind the scenes. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I love the percentile ranking because I was in high school in the half of the class that made the upper half possible. So both halves have a lot of relevance. Gerald, I want to ask you a question. If folks want to get started with this technology, what advice and suggestions would you give them? Well, what we do at Express Ranches, Kevin, is at weaning time, we go through and one of those cards that Kent was talking about, we actually take a blood sample from every calf we wean. We archive it at the ranch. As we went through the, the problem with genetic abnormalities and other things, uh, with parentage verification and other things, we decided that was a good policy. And I'd recommend that to all purebred producers. And then what we do with the cattle that we identify that we want to turn in for genomic enhanced EPDs, we make sure we turn that in at least two months prior to when we want to go to catalog or go to press with that information. And so we always have that information on every animal, every purebred that's born at the ranch, and then we submit it at least two months prior to when we want to start on the catalog. Very good. Did you know that you can find Pfizer Animal Health on Facebook and Twitter? Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash P-A-H-U-S forward slash livestock and follow us on Twitter at Pfizer underscore beef. We'll be back with some final thoughts from our experts right after this. These days, more cattlemen choose Draxon to fight BRD than any other brand. Here's why. It works. Uh, we have uh, fewer uh, repulls, and the ones that we do repull respond, and we have fewer chronics in the end. To retreat anything is, it's a lot more expensive than using Draxon as the first time. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts retreats by 50%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see why Draxon should be your first choice to fight BRD. Basically what it's allowed us to do with our operation is run more cattle through in a given period of time. It's just really been a good, good product to use. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA provides a uniform voice for all segments of the industry. I am an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because it's important that all cattle producers band together to get our message across to protect our livelihoods and make ranching sustainable for the next generation. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member because especially 
In today's political climate, it is important that we have one unified voice from pasture to plate, and NCBA gives us that opportunity. I am an NCBA member. Join me today. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Seasons change, but year in, year out, year round, it's Crystal Lick season. With specific supplements for weaning stress in fall. Protein for pre-calving in winter. Calving in spring. And minerals and fly control in summer. For low cost per head per day supplements, every season is Crystal Lick season. One of the most formidable forces in nature is the salesman at the top of his game. They can stop wars, stampedes, hurricanes, tight ends, and lemmings in their tracks. Why, if it weren't for salesmen, Henry Ford would just be an obscure inventor. The Appaloosa horse would not exist, and public TV would still be airing Lou Grant reruns. You can see these salesmen on long country roads, headed to the next call, going over their sales pitch, or listening to self-help CDs. Or you can spot them eating supper alone at restaurants that offer home cooking all the time, preparing for tomorrow and their next big chance to prove they have what it takes. The power of persuasion, the patience of redwood, and the persistence of black mold in your drywall to wear the title of super. Sales. Slicker than deer guts on a doorstep. Smooth as a filly's nose. Here in this jug's a miracle drug so new that nobody knows. Feed it, inject it, or plant it. Stick it under an ear. Pick any breed. Results guaranteed. The data's perfectly clear. It's good for foot rot and gophers. Chafing on buffalo thighs. Horses with corns and angus with horns. And girls with fire in their eyes. Goats with a bad disposition, lovers losing their spark, turpentine cats and blindfolded bats and dogs that forgot how to bark. Friends, are you troubled with aphids? Kids all down with the flu. Cattle won't gain, need more rain. I'll tell you what this will do. Kill all the weeds in your garden, patch up your inner tube, leaven your bread and stiffen your thread and work out your rubbish cube. Give you more miles per gallon, relieve your gastric distress. And if that ain't enough, this wonderful stuff eats barbecue stains off your dress. I see you don't quite believe me. Well, the best I saved for last. Pay me the cash, then quick as a flash. See? I went too fast. Okay, we'll do it again. Watch and you'll understand, safe and improved, it gently removes a $5 bill from your hand. This is Baxter Black. From outside. Well, we're wrapping up our discussion about the use of genetics and DNA technology on your operation. And now for some final thoughts. Gerald, I'd begin with you. Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to say, Kevin, I think this technology is really, really exciting. And the uh, American Ag Association through AGI is really excited about working with Pfizer uh, to deliver what we think is going to be something that really impacts in a positive way not only the seed stock industry but as importantly or more importantly the commercial industry. Tom, what message would you leave with our viewers? I think two quick thoughts. One, um, this technology needs to be embedded across breeds in, in the industry and I think that Angus has been the leader but it's time for the rest of the industry to follow I think with enthusiasm. And secondly, it's really an important time for seed stock producers and commercial producers to access information and education so they can understand the best application of the technology. And Dr. Anderson, uh, what thoughts would you share? A couple things, Kevin. I would first direct a comment or a key takeaway to commercial users of Angus Genetics 
and encourage them to buy bulls that have genomic enhanced EPDs powered by the 50K technology that can impact not only the output side of production but also the input side to help with um, improved profitability overall. And lastly, I would just uh, thank the folks at Angus Genetics Inc. and the American Angus Association for the opportunity to collaborate and bring this exciting technology to the industry. And thank you all for sharing your insights and experiences with us. For more information on Pfizer Animal Genetics and the HD50K test, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Next week, join us for a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Environmental Stewardship Award Program. Thanks so much for joining us for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD-TV.